Hi and welcome to this new video from helituning.com where we're going to be looking at the programming of the DX7 or in this case the DX7 SE. Uh, both these two radios have pretty much exactly the same functions within them and, in, and are programmed in exactly the same way. The only real difference between the DX7 and the DX7 SE is that the DX7 has a buddy lead capability and therefore some training options within its menu system to allow you to set up a buddy box with another transmitter. Um, so I won't be covering that in this particular video because the DX7 SE doesn't have that capability. Uh, but for the rest of the programming capabilities that's exactly the same as the DX7 uh, and we will be going through that and having a look at how all of the programming functionality works uh, a step at a time looking at each function that uh, the DX7 SE provides. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to look at is how we access the menu functions on the DX7. So if we switch on the DX7, I've got this set on a completely blank model memory that I haven't used before uh, and it's called model 15 in this instance. And we have two menu systems that we can get into, or two ways of accessing the same menu system, in fact. The first way is we can press select and up together. And this will give us a list of all of the functions available on the transmitter. And then we can scroll through those using the up or the down rocker switch and that will scroll through each of the settings here. I'll just scroll through all of these. You can see all of the standard settings that you're able to access when you haven't done any other configuration in the transmitter. Now the other way we can get into the menu system, if I just turn this off, turn it back on again, we can go directly to the functions uh, and their configuration and the way we do that is we press select and down simultaneously and that takes us into the function and you can see the function listed at the top of the display here in this case it's dual rate and exponential and we can scroll through all of the functions available within the radio using the up and down rocker so here we see our uh, stick positions, the timer, program mix, revolution mixing, pitch curves, throttle curves and all of these functions are exactly the same functions that you would normally see in the function list if you'd pressed select and up and we can go back to that list like so by pressing select and up at any time and we see that straightforward list of functions again uh, and then we can scroll through these and if we want to look at one of these then we can press select and enter with the arrow against it and that will take us into throttle curve if we want to go back to the list press select and up it takes us back out to the function list okay so that's two of the menus there is in fact a th oh, well it's the same menu but two ways of accessing it there is a hidden menu uh, I say hidden, it's not particularly hidden, it's just uh, a system menu that uh, you can only get into through a certain power on procedure. Uh, and the way you do that, if I switch this off, is uh, you basically hold down, select and down, and then whilst holding those down, you push your power on switch up. And that takes you into the system menu. Uh, and in the system menu, you can see uh, a number of system-wide options uh, for the transmitter. If I just scroll through these, you've got model select, which allows you to select different models, swash plate type, uh, how your switches are going to function on the radio, throttle recovery function, resetting a model, what type of model you're configuring, whether it be helicopter or plane, the model name that you can select for this particular model memory and then we're back to our first option again so that's the uh, hidden 
menu and to come out of this hidden menu at any time you press select and down together and that takes you back to your standard front page that you would get had you switched the, the TX on without holding down select and down. So those are the menu systems available to you. The first thing I'm going to do is go through the system menu and explain how the system menu functions work. Okay, so the first function we're going to look at is the model selection function. So if we hold down select and down, power on our transmitter, it takes us into our system menu. And here we can see that we have the model select screen displayed. This is the one that always comes up when you initially power on uh, in this particular manner. And here we can select which model memory we wish to use for this particular power on of the transmitter. Now the way we can select which model we're using is on the selection switch over here. And we can scroll up or down through the models. You can see scrolling up, up to 20 models on this transmitter, and then scrolling down. And then if you then discover that you want to use one of these particular models for this particular flight session, so in my case if I was going to be flying my Velocity 50, then that's model number 12, and you can see I've named it Velocity, and then to actually select that model memory you hold down, select and down, and then you see the model name here indicating that you've selected that particular model. Okay, and that's how you select models from the system menu. Okay, the next function we're going to be looking at is how to specify a name for your particular model memory. So the first thing we want to do is to get into our system menu, so we hold down the keys, power up, and it's actually gone straight into the model name because that's the menu that I was last on when I was within here. Um, I'm just going to come out of that back to the model select, let's power off, power on again the same way you can see it now brings up the model select function. Uh, it remembers which menu you were using the last time you were within the system menu. Now, the one we want to use is the model naming function and we can get to that by pressing up to scroll through our available functions and up will scroll through all of them. There aren't many so if we get back to model name and here you can see we have an arrow which indicates where we're changing a character and we can move that arrow by pressing the select key and then to actually change what character we're writing on the screen we use the up and down rocker this side and this scrolls through various characters and it has upper and lower case so here we have our uppercase characters And then if I scroll further on, we can see we have lowercase characters. So let's say I just want to call this model Ash. There's the first letter, press select, takes us to our next letter. I'm going to go for a lowercase s this time. Press select. Press select again. And then when you've finished naming your model and you're happy with it, you press select and down to complete. And there we go, we have our model name dash. Now let's say we decide that we don't want to keep that name, we actually want to change it go back into our system menu, scroll forward on this side and we can press clear and that will clear that letter, press select, clear, select, clear and then we can press select to get back to the start again and we can put a different name in. 
and then when we finished we would press select and down again and that would complete the operation and put the name of the model in for us. So that's how you name models. The next function we're going to look at is how you switch the model memory between being for a model aeroplane or for a model helicopter. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get into our system settings. Hold down the two keys, power on, brings us to our system menu and we're currently dealing with model 15. If we move forward to the type select menu and then using the up and down or the increase and adjust rocker on the right hand side here we can switch between acro mode which is for aeroplanes or heli mode which is for helicopters. If I select acro mode you then press clear key as it says here to say yes and that puts you in acro mode and this will now if I come out of the system settings you can see we've got a plane so we're in aircraft mode if I go back into the system menu you can see we're in acro mode I can switch back to heli mode press the clear key and say yes Press select and down to confirm, and we're back in helicopter mode. The next function we're going to look at is the model reset function or the integral timer reset function, which are both on the same system menu screen. So, first we need to get into our system menu. So, we hold down to power on, and we get our system menu scroll until we get to the model reset function. Now here we have two options which we can flip between with the select key. We can either select data reset or integral timer reset. The data reset function will reset this particular model memory to factory defaults and reset the integral timer. And that integral timer is just timing how long you've spent using that particular model memory. If you select integral timer, then all you're doing is resetting the integral timer for that particular model memory. And you're not resetting the entire model memory to factory defaults. Now the way you do your reset, if you're doing a data reset, is you select data reset, press the clear key, data reset flashes once, and that model memory has been reset, and you can see the integral timer also resets as a part of that, because you're resetting the entire model memory. If you select integral timer only, and press the clear key, all it does is reset the integral timer, but will not clear out all of your settings for your particular model on that model memory. Okay. The next function I'm going to look at is how to enable or disable the throttle recovery function from the system menu. First we need to get into the system menu. We scroll through to throttle recovery. The way we enable throttle recovery is by pressing the increase button at the top here and that activates it press it again, it inhibits it. And it's as simple as that. Now I will, I will uh, describe throttle recovery in a later video. For the moment, this particular section is just to show you how to activate it or inhibit it. The next function is the input select function. Uh, the way you get to the input select function is it's within the system menu so we hold down the two buttons and power on to get into our system menu and then we scroll through to input select. Now what this menu does is it allows us to decide which switch is going to control one of two different channels. So we have the AUX2 channel and the gear channel and we can select between them with the select key. So if I want to change which switch activates the AUX2 channel or toggles the AUX2 channel or controls the way the uh, AUX2 channel works and I can do that by using the increase or adjust rocker 
And by pushing that, I've now switched AUX2 control to the F mod function of the radio, or I've inhibited it, or I set it to the gyro function of the radio, or back to the standard AUX2 switch. So there are three different ways AUX2 can be controlled, F mod, gyro, or the AUX2 switch itself. And then the gear switch, or the gear channel, can be controlled by the gear switch, as shown here, or it can be inhibited, or it can be controlled by the gyro menu, or in fact the AUX2 switch. So we could have both gear and AUX2 on the AUX2 switch, which is what I've selected here. Okay, so that's the input select function. The next function I'm going to look at is how you select your swash plate type. It's in the system menu. Hold down the two buttons, power on. And we scroll through until we get to swash type. And here we can now select from various different swash plate types. One servo is MCCPM mode, or we have basically one servo for each channel function, so collective pitch is on one servo, um, elevator and aileron are on a servo each. Two servos gives us 180 degree swash plate control. Three servos is 120 degree control. And then you have three servo 90 degree control and then back to one servo or your normal MCCPM mode. Uh, effectively, you tend to use only two of the modes here. Either you've got an MCCPM model, i.e. there is one channel and one servo for each control function, or you have a CCPM model where there are three servos connected to the swash plate and they all move together in order to give you your cyclic and collective pitch. And for that you would select three servos 120 degree. Okay, the last function I'm going to explain in the system menu is the model copy function, which allows you to copy one model memory to another. The way we access that is we go into our system menu, hold down the two, power on, and we get the model select screen. Now we press select and that puts us into copy mode and this allows us to now do a copy of the currently selected model memory, which is model 15. And then with the rocker switch, we can select which model memory we want to copy to. So let's say I want to copy to model 17. And when you're happy, hold down the clear key and it copies from model 15 to model 17.